So let's look at how do we do this. How do we add or subtract rational expressions? Okay. So when we say rational, again, that means something that would be like a fraction. Okay. So let's look at this really, really basic first. All right. So this is, they're not really expression. They're just two fractions. What if I'm adding a half and three tenths? Right, you have to get a common denominator, okay? So when these turn into x's and such, we're going to have to get a common denominator. Now I'm going to do this a little bit different than we normally do here. But what I'm going to do is just draw one big line and get what the common denominator would be there, okay? So if I have 2 and 10, what the common denominator is, what the smallest number that both 2 and 10 go into, which would be 10. Now, some people tell me 2. 2 would be like a factor that goes into 2 and 10. I want, what's the, what's the smallest number that 2 and 10 go into, not the number that goes into 10, okay? So it would be 10, okay? So our least common denominator is going to be 10 there. Now, is the numerator here going to stay the same? So I'm just going to bring this one down. No. If my denominator changes, then my numerator is changing. So to get from 2 to 10, we'd have to multiply by 5, right? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to show that I'm multiplying by 5. Now, y'all don't have to show that when you do these problems, okay? I'm going to show it, though. So that means I have to multiply the numerator by 5, and 1 times 5 is going to give me 5, okay? Now, when I went from this 10 to this 10, it didn't change there, did it? So I don't have to multiply. So can I bring down the 3 on that one? Yeah, okay? And now we can combine the numerator there. 5 and 3 would give me 8. This would be 8 tenths, which would be 4 fifths, okay? Now, that's just, you know, sort of an easy way of looking at what we're going to do. Now, let's look at one here that's actually going to be an expression. See, that wasn't an expression because it didn't have a variable in it. All right, so let's try this one, all right? And, and what we're going to look at here is, and we'll title this one, is when we have monomial denominators, okay? And... I'll kind of explain that when we get there, okay? All right, so let's try this one. Let's say we've got um, 4 over, let's say, 3xy squared. Plus 3 over, and let's say this way, get like 6x squared y. Okay? Now, so again, what we're looking at in the denominators, we have to get a common denominator to be able to combine the 4 and the 3, don't we? Okay, so we just can't say 7. Now, when we say monomial denominators, let's go over that term. What monomial means is just single terms. It, okay? So, in other words, it's not, they're not separated with addition and subtraction. Okay? So, to get a common denominator, because that's really what we're looking at, the big step is to get the common denominator. First off, just look at the coefficients. Just the way we looked at, what, 2 and 10 up here, let's look at 3 and 6 the same way. What's the smallest number 3 and 6 go into? It would be 6. Okay? So it's going to be 6 here. Now, for the variable parts of those monomials, all you basically have to do to get the least common denominator is use the one that has the bigger exponent. So if I have an x and an x squared, that means I need to use an x squared right here because it has the bigger exponent. Okay? And so when I have y squared and y, y squared is bigger, so we're going to use y squared. So I got the least common denominator, and we, we're not doing that in terms of a fraction. You call it the least common multiple. Okay. Yes. Um, preferably. Okay. Now, let's look at this. So what we just don't bring down 4 and 3, though, do we? We've got to multiply them by something. So whatever I multiplied to get from 3x squared, or I'm sorry, 3xy squared to 6x squared y squared, I'm going to have to multiply the numerator by the same thing, okay? So to get from 3 to 6, we multiplied by 2, 
right? Okay, and to get from x to x squared, we'd have to multiply by an x. Now, we went from y squared to y squared, so we don't really need to multiply by a y, do we? So what we had to do to get from here to here is we had to multiply by 2x. So that means I need to multiply the numerator by 2x. Okay, so that's going to give me 8x. And there again, y'all don't have to, you don't have to show that part. Okay, I just show it for teaching purposes. Now, all right, let's look at this one. So the 3, again, it's not just going to come down. Now, from the 6 to the 6, I don't have to multiply by anything, do I? And now I went from x squared to x squared. Don't have to multiply by anything to get there. But from y to y squared, you would have to multiply by y. So I'm going to have to multiply by y right there. The numerator and the denominator. So if I multiply the denominator by y, I got to multiply the numerator by y. So 3 times y would just be 3y. Okay. Now, can I actually combine 8x and 3y? No. Okay. So really, this is going to be it. Now, the only thing I might be able to do would be possibly to cancel. But remember what we said. This is why we did the bell ringer that we did. What does the operation have to be? Multiplication, right? So can I cancel out like this x with this x squared somehow? No, because this is addition right there. Even though it's multiplication down here, it's not up there. So really, I can't cancel out anything. Now, the only way I would be able to cancel out something is if you, what? No, you can separate them. Fact, but separating them will just get you back to here. Factor them. Okay? So this nothing's going to factor here, is it? Now, I want you to imagine this. All right, what if this number right here, instead of being a 3, what if it was like an even number? You could factor out a 2, couldn't you? And then that 2 could cancel out with the 6, because if you factored it out, it would be multiplying, wouldn't it? Okay, do y'all want to look at that? All right, and just say like, what if? You know, sometimes I do that with y'all. So, all right, so what if? All right, what if I would have got... 8x plus, and let's let's say like an um, even number, like 10y, okay? So what if we would have gotten that? All right, so right, I can, I can factor out a 2, okay? So we get 2 times, and so they'd leave me with what now? 4x plus 5y over 6x squared y squared. No, nah, because it's it's just a monomial. Okay, so if you know if you'd had six x squared y squared plus something else with an even number. Okay, now, so now can I cancel out the two with the six? Yes, because what's the operation right there? Multiplication, right? So two goes into six three times, and then that would be my answer. Okay, all right. But the bottom line is this: when it comes to when it comes to adding and subtracting these, the biggest idea is get to the common denominator. Okay? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And I don't have room to write it, but that would be it. Okay? Now, so back to this. I forgot what I was saying now. That's okay. Basically, it's going to be over at this point. Okay? So if you're able to combine like terms, you will. And again, the only way that you're going to be able to simplify something is if you can factor. Okay? Yeah. What if there wasn't an addition sign up there? If you just said 8x, 3y. Like times 3y? Yeah. Then you could go to canceling on the x's and the y's. Mm -hmm. Because the operation would be multiplication. Yeah. And the 3 and the 6, too. Okay? You could cancel away if it was multiplication. Okay? Now... Let's look. I lost my page on this. Hang on now. All right. So, you know, the key there is what we were talking about was monomial denominators. Okay. Now, let's go to some where we're not necessarily talking about monomials in the denominator. All right. Um, let's look at maybe this one. Three. Yeah. 
All right, so we got 3 over x squared minus 9 minus, let's say, 4 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay. Now, so we're subtracting, right? Now, the subtracting is not going to be that much different than adding. Now, I always say this when I teach adding and subtracting rational expressions. Okay, y'all probably remember it from like um, last year. I never subtract. I only add the opposite. Okay, so instead of saying minus this, I'm going to say plus a negative. Okay, never subtract rational expressions. Only add the opposite. Now, if you'll take this strategy, you won't make the careless error that you usually make with subtraction. Okay, if you'll do it this way. Yes. Yeah, do it to the top number. Because doing the bottom number kind of complicates things. All right. Now, let's do this. So, to combine these, what we need to do is come up with the common denominator, right? But, so we're going to have to factor. Because... It's hard to find out what the common denominator is if you don't know what the factors of something are, right? Okay, so probably what would happen is when we do this problem, we don't even copy this down. We copy down the factored form, okay? So let's copy down the factored form here. This would be what? X plus 3 times X minus 3, okay? And then factors of 3 that add to give me 4 would be 3 and 1, okay? Both of them would be positive, right? So now, what we've switched from here, remember what we talked about just a minute ago? We said what? Monomial denominators. Now we've got, what are these now? Binomial denominators. Okay. Now, here's how you find the common denominator with binomial ones. What you do is you look at what you have in common and then the leftovers. Okay. So what do we have in common here? Right, x plus 3. So that's a common factor. So I'm going to use one of those. Now, is there anything else in common there besides these two? All right. And then, whatever's left over, which would be the x minus 3 times x plus 1. So there's my common denominator. Okay? Now, right. Well, no, you don't have to multiply all this out. But we're going to have to multiply by some. So when I went from here to here, I had to, if I was going from here to here, I'd have to multiply by x plus 1, right? Okay, so I'd have to multiply here by, again, you don't have to show this part, x plus 1. So if I multiply that, or if I had to multiply that by x plus 1 on the denominator, then I need to do it to the numerator. Okay, now what's that going to give me there? Right, well... Somebody said 3x plus 1. 3x plus 3. You got to distribute. Okay. Now, so what about here? Right. All right. Y'all see what she's saying there? You have to multiply it by an x minus 3. And there again, you know, once you start doing a lot of these, y'all won't be showing that step in your work. Okay. I wasn't done. You know, I was just making part of the 3. All right, here we go. So now multiply it by negative 4. They give me what? Negative 4x plus 12. Okay? Now, remember last time we weren't able to combine any like terms? Here we can go to town on this one. Okay? So that would give me what? Negative x. Okay? And then 15. Okay? Over all this. Now, here again, the only way I'm going to be able to simplify or to cancel out is if you, like the operations multiplication, which means you might have to factor. Nothing's going to factor here. So is anything going to cancel out? No. This is going to be it right there. All right. Now, so kind of look at it. I'm kind of progressing here a little bit. Okay, we looked at what? With just monomial denominators. Okay. It was a lot like just adding two regular fractions. 
except for you use what the one with the higher power okay and then all right let's go back to the common denominator part on here how do we get with the binomial ones Right, what's in common, and then what's left over. Okay, now let's do an example here with a combination of both things. And I got to start this over because it's too big. Okay. 